Hey everybody, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I wanted to come with a quick video today on the power of the Holy Spirit in His in, uh, indwelling in us and us being full of His Spirit. And I was reading Romans chapter 8 today, particularly uh, kind of swayed my attention uh, to verse 26. The whole chapter is powerful um, but I wanted to just talk about the utterings and the groanings of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit uses us um, to pray and intervene and intercede uh, as needed you know whether it's day to day or whether he needs you instantly and I listened to a lady um, video yesterday speaking I think her name is Audrey Mack and she was speaking on the same thing that I'm about to reference on um, the Holy Spirit and how he you know he likes to use us where you know we're the vessels of Jesus Christ here in the earth and so he, he uses us to pray and intercede so that he can intervene in different um, areas different situations and so I began to think about a couple years ago um, a friend of mine um, well I didn't know her at the time but I introduced myself and I was trying to witness to her to you know pray her in and um, uh, just you know tell her about the goodness of Jesus Christ you know minister to her about salvation for her and her family and she declined you know she gave me a no and and I was okay with that you know I didn't uh, take offense to it at all I just continued to pray for her because it was a reason why God had drawn me to her so anyway um, it was around this time of year and that's what made me think about it it was New Year's um, for the, I think it was New Year's for 2012 or 2013 I can't remember which one but it was a couple years a few years ago and so um, I was trying to you know ask her if she would like to come to church with me for New Year's and she was like no I'm going to get high I'm going to get buzz I'm, I'm going to get you know she was just saying all of this stuff she wanted to do versus being in church on New Year's Eve she pretty much wanted to party and come in hard in that new year and so I said okay so later that week I want to say towards the end of the week at work she came in there to me she said did you pray for me and I said huh she said did you pray for me because I couldn't get a buzz I couldn't get high nothing would happen for me that I wanted to happen on New Year's I said well praise the Lord <laughs> So she said, well, I want to go to church with you. Long story short, she ended up coming to church and she gave her life to Jesus Christ. It was powerful. And about two weeks later, um, I was in Walmart shopping around for some things. And all of a sudden, I just felt this urgency, this nudge in the bottom of my stomach at the very pit of my stomach and it was like I'm shopping pushing my cart around looking at clothes looking getting getting food you know just doing you know what you do in the store and um all of a sudden I kept feeling that nudge to the point where I put all of my items back I don't even know did I I don't even remember I think I rushed through the line like I put things back hurry up and went through the line and I sat in my car and I said, Lord, who am I praying for? What? Why you got me praying? And it was like, I just started praying in the spirit. All the way home, driving home, praying in tongues. Got in my closet. It was like I could not stop. I don't know how long I went. It may have been, I don't even know. I just prayed until I felt that release. And I began to, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And, and then I, it, I began to sing and worship and so I knew that whatever it was, that there was a breakthrough. There was a release. I didn't know what happened, but there was a deliverance. There was a breakthrough because that burden that I was carrying at that moment was lifted. And I felt like it was an urgency 
that God wanted me to pray until that thing was manifested, that, until that thing was broken, it was set free. So later that evening, I felt led to text my new friend who had just gotten saved. And I text her, it was probably about 10, 10 or 11 p.m. that night. And I said, hey, just checking on you to see, I haven't heard from you. Just, you know, hoping everything is okay. And I didn't get a response back. It was probably like about maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock that morning. I got a response from, it wasn't her, it was her daughter. And her daughter said, hey, Miss Tam, um, this is uh, so-and-so. So my mom hasn't responded because she's in the hospital. Can you come to the hospital? Well, it's like one o'clock in the morning. And so I said, I can come in the morning. Let me know what hospital she's in. And so she gave me the information. I get there and she's in this bed where her body is vertically standing upright. Her neck is broken, it's in a sling. She has these casts and stuff on her body, bruises and cuts and gash and stitches on her face. Her she had she had to get dental work, teeth were missing. All of this was like she looked like she was pretty much and like she was supposed to be dead. So I get in the hospital room and she's like the only thing she could say because she was in so much pain was if I hadn't got saved, I would have been dead. And all I could do was say, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for having me to pray so urgently because that night she had had a major car accident. And 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 her it was so bad that she had broken her neck. Her neck was broken. And the only thing that was kept, kept kept her alive, she said, was she got believed that because she got saved, that God spared her. But she was supposed to be, and, and, and when I tell y'all, her body looked so damaged and so bruised, and she was released from the hospital. Uh, she released herself out of the hospital for other reasons um, that she mentioned. But she left that hospital um, still in pain, but relieved and thankful that she was alive because she was supposed to be dead. And so I just want to say how important it is when the Holy Spirit gives you that nudge, that that inner witness, that inner poke from the Lord saying, hey, I need you to pray or hey, I need you to fast or hey, I need you to worship. It could be anything that God is trying to get us to be in that place of his presence. And to carry, I've mentioned that in previous videos, to carry the glory, the goodness of God and who he is, to allow that to be manifested in our day-to-day -day life. One other quick story um, is, uh, or, or, or yeah, I, I was going to Firestone. This was a few years ago too. Going to Firestone, dropping my car off, to go get an oil change, sitting in the waiting room. While I'm in there, there's a whole lot of people in there, in and out, in and out, kids, everyone waiting on their cars. I'm sitting in there and minding my own business, looking at the television, looking at my phone, doing other things. And out of all the people in this room, this older gentleman comes in and says, hey, I know who you are. And I'm thinking, I have never seen this man a day in my life. Who is this man? He said, you are a child of the most high God. And that just, I just looked at that man in shock and I said, well, God bless you, sir. He said, I could just see the light of God in you. And I said, well, praise God. He said, you know, I've been saved for a couple months. This was an older man. Probably I would give him 50s, a little bit older, uh, maybe than that. And he said, well, he said, I just got saved a few months ago. I was in a bar in a pool hall, shooting pool, drinking it with my boys, you know. And um, this man came in the bar, ministered to him. He got saved right there, sitting there drinking his beer at the bar. <laughs> 
gave his life to Jesus Christ. And so he was just telling me of, of just the goodness of God and what God was doing. But then he mentioned some strongholds that he wanted me to pray about in his life um, that he was asking God to wean him away from. But he had such a zealousness about who Jesus was. And he could recognize that light, you know, light, recognize light and light stands out in darkness. So if you're in a dark place, meaning you could be in a room full of people, but if they don't have the power and the presence of Jesus Christ living with them, that knowledge of who he is, that faith in him, that salvation in their lives, no one can tell if they're not living according and having the word of God in them. So I've recognized him once he began to speak. I said, yes, he has Jesus Christ living in his heart. And I could tell just by that joy in him when he spoke about his name, that he truly loved him. And so it was just a blessing to be in a company of those in public, perfect stranger, but child of God who we could we were able to fellowship different races able to fellowship together in love because we were one in the body of Christ well anyway anyway guys be blessed i pray that you have a happy and blessed new year in the lord and i pray God's favor provision blessings miracles salvations healings in your lives in Jesus name for you and your family amen